Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. And welcome back on board a very interesting plane. Yes, of course, that is the Tupolev Tu-154, a plane that I describe as one of the most complicated planes to fly, or for me personally, most confusing planes to fly, because I mean, look at this in-flight engineering panel, there's just so many things that don't really make sense about this plane, let me just say that. For example, <laughs> Let me just, let me just shoot against this plane now. The fire protection system. I, I tried flying this plane actually a few days ago in a live stream. You shouldn't miss those, those are interesting. Where I am generally, I tried to do a whole flight with the whole startup and everything with this very plane here. And well, I kind of desperately yeah, yeah, had some trouble with this plane. Let me just say that, okay? <laughs> For example, there's some weird things. For example, <laughs> the fire extinguisher is just there to press. No cap to open or anything. No protection, we can just press these and kill the engines, I think, right? Now, that's just really an example, right? I think everyone can just jump into the cockpit and render the engines useless, right? Which I think is an interesting idea. But then when it comes to actually, you know, flying this plane properly, like doing normal operations, you have to, for example, use uh, these switches here that are hidden by a red cap, which normally on, you know, European planes means emergency, only for emergency. But for this one, it appears to be normal operation to, to switch these these switches and get those caps up. See, this is just generally what really confused me. This is very different to European planes and what we're used to. And we've rendered the plane dead now. Um, that was not too smart. Yeah. See, this is a very interesting plane indeed. And it also, not only from the, you know, startup procedure thing, but also from the handling. Let's talk about that today, actually. And also from just generally what this plane is. I mean, it's, it came out in the 1960s and it's still flying around. Like 50 of these are flying around today. Day. Only with weird airlines, though, like Air Koryo, which generally is the North Korean airline, the North Korean airline, featuring wonderful planes like the Triple F2154. But I mean, you know, it still kind of does hold up for today, right? I mean, there's a sign that this plane is still flying around. The Concorde from the late 60s isn't flying around anymore, even though it's actually newer than this plane design, right? So, you know, we've got to think about that. Um, actually, let's again reset this whole plane because we've completely broken it apart. All right, now. <clears throat> Finally, a completely working plane, as you can see, all the instruments are turning on. That was a very uncomfortable sound right there. Let's just go ahead and actually just take off, because, the again, the handling of this plane is not easy either. This is interesting, isn't it? All right, let's go ahead and uh, get the flaps out, get everything ready. I don't know why the sound is here. Is this normal? Is it normal to have the sound? I think so. I, I genuinely, I don't know how this plane works. <laughs> There's just things that, you know, I really, really had to get used to in the stream, for example, where I try to really professionally fly this plane. It's super hard. I mean, especially just look at the speed indicator. It has two speeds on it. I'm, I'm dying. Help. Okay, this was a, a relatively good takeoff, but as you could see, we'd used this whole 1200 meter long runway. And if you know this channel already, then we know that this is kind of our home base at this point, La Mole Airport in France. The thing about this place is that, you know, most planes can actually surprisingly fly here quite well, even though this is a bit little bit of a short runway. Most planes actually don't need that long of a runway, indeed. You know, the 737 can fly here, the 757 can fly here. 767 could, I think, maybe. But as you can see, the Tupolev, we did kind of overrun. And this is actually a very dirty plane here. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. I mean, what can I say? It looks so weird how this plane looks when it's flying, you know, with the landing gear so far apart as well. It's, it is very interesting. All right, then. Let's go ahead and maybe try flying this plane at some interesting places. We have never experimented around with how much runway for example, this interesting to handle plane needs. Now, let me come in here for a landing here on this 1200 meter long runway, first of all, which again, 1200 meters is like the sweet spot. All right, then let's go ahead and uh, come in here for this runway. I don't know how this is going to work. See, I've experimented around with flying this plane properly and I've always struggled a little bit. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and put the landing gear down, get the flaps down. By the way, this is another interesting, confusing thing about this plane. The flaps handle is up here. It's literally on the overhead panel, and same as the landing gear lever, which is normally always like around here, like in front of a, a you. What did I say? Okay. On the dashboard? Yeah, that's what it's called. I don't know what I'm saying. All right. All right, let's get everything ready here. Trying to land this plane now with these interesting instruments here. Okay. Come on. 
Can we stop? Let's do this. All right, hard landing, but that's what the Russian planes can do easily. Let's go ahead and stop all the way using this whole stopping performance of this complete plane. Just stop, please. We've landed on the grass runway too, but <laughs> that hasn't really worked, has it? Mm, that's a little, <laughs> a little sad now. Even though all the hydraulics, the, the 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 everything is working, the brakes are working totally fine too. All right, let's actually check how this landing went. Not well, <laughs> very hard, and then an totally overrun, rest in peace, Tupolev 2, 154. All right, this is very interesting now. We actually used the whole stopping performance of this plane, which would be weird. I mean, this is 1,200 meters of a runway. This is normally long enough. Okay, whatever. We need to find a longer runway than 1,200 meters. This is actually the first time that we have to do that, interestingly enough, by the way. Um, so, um, how about, let's just go for a random place. Okay, La Isabella International. I don't know where that is. It's not gonna have any scenery installed. All right, welcome to a random place, but that random Random place got a lot of a longer runway than the other random place at in the south of France. Okay, let's see. Maybe we can uh, stop finally. Okay, right, let's put that landing gear down. Get everything ready. We're now using the full performance of this plane again or something. Maybe let's try landing at a lower speed. Maybe that'll help us a little bit. Because honestly, I'm I'm running out of options. This is actually the first time that a plane could really not land or take off even at La Mole Airport. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, let's come in now. 180 knots. Still, we're a little fast. This plane really won't slow down for me. Let's come in for a landing. This is going to be hard. I need the whole runway, really. Okay, that's been a landing. Let's go ahead and stop. Just as quickly as possible. Please, just stop. Please, please. Oh my goodness. All right, we have actually stopped with the full braking performance. And uh, still, we use pretty much 80% of this runway, which is really interesting. Oh, man, this is so weird. I mean, look at how much runway we use. How does a plane that is actually pretty large and can carry a lot of passengers, how does this have the audacity to use a runway that's not 12 meters long? What the hell is wrong with this? Okay, so maybe let's try then. Uh, we have some other places, of course, to check out. La Gomera. Interesting airport. I don't know this one, actually. <laughs> but it's got a 1500 meter long runway, or actually 1490. So, shorter runway. Let's see if it can land here. Alright, now welcome to La Gomera Island. And uh, well, we have this interesting airport here in front of us. See, the, really the point of this video now is really me trying to find out what could really the shortest runway for this plane be. And apparently it cannot be too short. I mean, really, that's with some of these old planes, right? But not with all of them. Especially the Russian ones. I mean, you know, Know, we all remember the L76, which can land on water, probably too. It didn't really didn't need a runway, did it? Can land in air, okay? That's the, with the most Russian planes, but maybe I don't know. Maybe the Tupolev is a little different. Let's come in now for a landing. Reversers, let's go. Oh, that was a little bit of a hard landing there, but we need that for a stop. Come on, stop, 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 stop. Okay, this uh, was quite life threatening again. <laughs> Look at this airport. Damn. Have we not checked this one out yet? Oh. <laughs> All right, but I think fly Pegasus shouldn't fly here, should it? Yeah. All right, let's check this landing out. Again, a little bit of a crash landing here. Let's uh, take a look at this one. Great. But we did stop in the end, so that's okay. <laughs> now, actually, though, we have to say, we have a little bit of this runway left, giving me a little bit more hope. Maybe if we land a little rougher, we can have a chance at really landing at some shorter fields. So let's maybe go to Catalina Island. It's 900 meter long run. No, this is not a good idea, is it? Yes, let's try it. All right, Santa Catalina Island. <sighs> let's do this. Or perhaps I should say Tupolev 2, 154. Let's do this. Maybe try actually putting out the reversers in mid-flight. The thing is, with this third engine that you have on top here, the tail engine, does not feature any reverse thrust, which is not particularly helping with the stopping performance of this plane for sure. Okay, let's maybe try. Can we let's land this plane a little low speed here? Hard landing. Oh, help. All right, very hard landing indeed. Let's go ahead and stop. Come on. Full power. Full power. Pray. 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 Oh, actually, wait. Is this is this good? Is this? Hmm. Oh. 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 Damn. All right, that went well. Actually, it did go very well here. Nice. Let's find out how this worked. This was actually very nice. We may have actually found the shortest runway that the Tupolev could ever land at with very broken landing here. <laughs> uh, maybe this is a little unrealistic. Yeah, doing a landing like this uh, probably isn't the smartest idea and also approaching with reverse thrusters all the way applied and then someone coming in slap for a landing. 
I mean, it, it worked after all. That's fine. But yeah, that's up with the Duple F2 154. I'm glad we actually found the shortest place this can operate at. Let's maybe try after this a takeoff. <laughs> all right, so for this takeoff, let's go ahead and try using this whole runway. So we're going to use every single inch, maybe of this whole plateau, honestly. Go maybe <clears throat> on the mountain still. Inside of this fence will do. Let's go ahead and reset the engines. Turn on the parking brake. There we go. And put the engines to a full power, okay? <laughs> all the three engines are actually running at full power now. Let's go ahead and um, set the flaps to zero, release the parking brake, and while we are rolling, advance the flaps slowly to the hole, okay? Like, we're gonna go for full flaps now. I can tell this is, um, I can already see this is not working, is it? Alright, let's, uh, go full on the flaps, because this is all we can do at this point. Alright! That's, uh, you know, taking off is quite a different story than landing, we gotta say that. I mean, how heavy is this plane? I'm now wondering, genuinely. Oh, this plane weighs 75 tons. Well, maybe, uh, I don't know about the Duple Live. Needs a long runway. But I like it. It's interesting. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night.